Thank you, and uh, good morning. Uh, it, it's always a pleasure to be in gatherings like this. I've been doing Healthy Cities work for 30 years now, and um, I'd like to congratulate Vancouver on, on moving to join the, the worldwide movement of Healthy Cities and Communities. Incidentally, that list that Andre read out earlier from WHO, the one that was all technocratic and gobbledygook, uh, I co-authored it. <laughs> And I'd have to say I'm still proud of it. <laughs> that was uh, actually 26 years ago when we started the Healthy Cities work. So, um, just very quickly, uh, f the first thing is, uh, what I, what I want to focus on is this, that, that I love the summit, it's been wonderful, but one good summit doesn't make a healthy city. And so what I want to focus on is lessons that we've learned in the Healthy City Movement from 25 years that really have to do with the business of governance. In a nutshell, you need healthy urban governance. How do you govern a city? How do you make the city, to, uh, how do you focus on health, and not just really on health, but on people, the notion of human-centered or people-centered development? Um, Bill Clinton had a, a, a slogan 20 or more, 30 years ago now, it's the economy, stupid. And the response to that is, no, actually, it's the people, stupid. Uh, and, and I talk a lot about that. So it needs to be human-centered. It needs to be ecologically sustainable. We have to live within con the constraints of, this, of the planet. It has to be empowering and participatory. And a lot of what we've heard today is really about many of those things. Um, and it has to be equitable. And we've also heard about that. And I know Paddy Daly is going to talk more about that. But uh, you have to address those inequalities. So let me just talk very briefly about a couple of these things. I think, and I've been saying this for years, if you think about what, what's the business we're in, why are we in government? What is the business of government? The business of government is not to grow the economy. I would argue it is, to, if you like, to grow people. Uh, there was a wonderful phrase that uh, a developer of Columbia, Maryland, back in the 50s, gave to his design team in designing Columbia, Maryland. He said, I want you to build me a garden to grow people in. And that's a really interesting image of what a city is or should be, or a community, not just a city. So surely, the central purpose of governance, a government and governance, which is a bigger concept, is to improve the, the and to maximize the health and the well-being and the quality of life. So it's health in a very broad sense of all the people, and that's the equity piece. And it has to be within the limits of local, regional, and global ecosystems, which is why linking health and sustainability uh, is or should be a no-brainer. I think it requires three things. It requires uh, a vision. It requires, uh, at least in your head, a, a conceptual model, and you sort of have one up there, which I, I really quite like. Um, and uh, you need a set of mechanisms, and I want to focus in, in the end on that. My friend Clem Beasold says that vision is simply values projected into the future. So understand what it is you value and project forward and outward what would it be like if our city or our community was organized to reflect those values and to live those values. And that's really what, vi so vision is simply values projected in the future. I talk about a model. Um, this is a model that I, I developed uh, some years ago and, and modified um, a few years ago. But to me, what we're talking about here is how do you build what I call community capital? And community capital has four component, five components to it. Um, social capital, built capital, financial capital, so human, social, uh, and natural cap and uh, built capital. Uh, sorry, human capital is at the center of all this. So, so the argument is if you get your social capital right and your built capital right and your financial capital right all within the context of natural capital, then you can maximize human capital. Now, I know some people don't like the notion of human capital, but if you think of human capital as simply the combination of all of the potential that each of us possesses as individuals, that's what you want to grow. So real capitalists, 
and I say this when I talk to the, the, to, 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 the, uh, uh, to the economics world, real capitalists build all five forms of capital simultaneously. You're not a real capitalist if you're building economic capital by depleting natural capital or depleting social capital or depleting human capital. And yet too often in our society, that's what we call capitalism. So we need to rethink what we mean by capitalism and we need to have communities that practice real capitalism. And I hope that that's where Vancouver is going. So, in conclusion, let me just talk, oh, incidentally, let me just go back and say one thing about this, which is, you, if you look at, for example, the discussion we had around community gardens, community gardens build all of these forms of capital simultaneously. Good housing does this. Good public transportation does this. And so you can actually take a lot of the things that have been talked about today and think about how do they simultaneously build all five forms of capital, and indeed they do. So, and to make all that happen, uh, and I think this is my central message that I'm going to end with, and there is incidentally a handout that you had in your materials that, that reflects some of this, you need a set of mechanisms and structures. You need, and this is lessons we learned, and actually we learned them fairly early on. I can remember writing this set of four uh, items uh, back in about 1990 or so, 1992, uh, at the end of the first five-year phase of healthy cities in Europe, so 91 or 92. You need political commitment. We've seen that today. The mayor is here uh, and, and councillors are here. It has to be led by mayor and council if this is going to work. You also need, along with that, community engagement. People have to be engaged. And, and for example, this is my favourite most recent example. I was in Belo Horizonte in Brazil recently. They have a deputy mayor for radical democratisation. <laughs> So I look forward to the day when Vancouver has a deputy mayor for <laughs> radical democratization. Uh, you have to have intersectional action. City, government alone doesn't make the city healthy. It has to have all kinds of partners, public sector, private sector, non-profit sector, community sector, academic sector, faith sector, you name it. But they've all got to be there. They've all got to be at the, at, at the table. Within City Hall, that means you have to have a technical group, which brings together all the different departments. It's very interesting. I had a graduate student in Toronto back in the 80s, went and looked at what led to city departments being created in the first place, going back into the minutes for 120 years worth or 150 years worth. A third of city departments were set up with an explicit reference to health as a reason why they were set up. Another third had a sort of implicit commitment to health in there. So health has been a driving force in the ev evolution of city government. Uh, urban planning in particular, I would say, waste management in particular, engineering and so on. So you have to bring those people together within City Hall. You have to have a technical group. And then beyond City Hall, you have to have a leadership group. You have to bring in the, the civic leadership from all those different sectors that I talked about earlier. And for out of that, you can then generate healthy public policy. What's a healthy transportation policy? What's a healthy city food policy? Which is what, for example, the Toronto Food Policy Council is all about. Um, and then you have to have some key structures. And so I guess I, this is the message I'd leave you with. If you're going to have this continue for, for years to come, and you'll see in that handout a summary from very recent research looking at phase Five of the European, uh, phase four of the European Healthy Cities project. You, you need a leadership council, which I've talked about, and you really do need a healthy city office. It doesn't have to be a lot of people, it can be very small, but someone has to bring it together, someone has to be responsible for carrying this forward, for making these networks, for making these linkages. And so um, I, I will leave you with that thought. Thank you. <laughs>